and it's rolling. Hey guys, welcome to the second day of spring. It's year 2013. If it's the present, then hooray. If you're in the future, then this is a little time capsule. And I thought it was a great day to start a tutorial video or start making tutorial videos. I've been putting them off for quite a while. I've been really wanting to share some practical knowledge about making art, but yeah, things happen and things get in the way. So let's get started. We're gonna do some watercoloring now. This is the beginner's tutorial, so we'll take it slow and go through a bunch of steps and what you need to know and need to have. Um, the most important thing you need to have to do watercoloring is watercolors. Uh, here we have Daler and Rowney. I actually just realized that most of my stuff is Daler and Rowney, even though I have not been planning to buy it all from the same brand, but it just so happened that I have it. Other brands are fine. I also have some uh, White Knights um, from, um, from St. Petersburg here. Looks like this. These are also awesome watercolors, but whatever you have, it's probably fine if you're starting up. I also have a cheap set. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff. Um, I don't even know what, what this one is, but it's it's a little bit less um, colorful, but it's, it's, it's also really nice to use. Um, then you need some water, obviously. I have a really nice cup here with some water, and like with most cups, uh, and most clothes, for that matter, if you if you have it around when you paint, then they all eventually become painting cups or painting clothes. So then you need brushes. Um, the most important thing about a brush is that it has to be soft, because then it will absorb some water, and it's like it's just nice. It's just nice against your skin. Um, so have have one of those, and of course you need paper. I have uh, an A5, 160 grams, it looks like this, like this, or, yeah, I don't know, I'm filming it upside down, I, I'm not sure if I should, if I'm gonna turn it around, but, yeah, some thick paper. Uh, usually you can just ask for watercolor paper and then you'll get something thick and it'll be fine. Um, then you need some tape, like this, or like this one. Um, and the reason you need tape is that you actually have to tape your paper down to something to um, keep it from curling up too much. And the reason it curls up is because when you put watercolors, I'm just gonna uh, show you here, uh, it like the edges, they curl up because the water expands the paper in some way. And it's just like, you can have it like this, but it's just easier to put on tape and it will just expand and as it dries it will come down and be straight and nice. So yeah, and I found a miracle a couple of weeks ago, which is a masking fluid. I've um, only been doing watercolors for a short time, but, uh, and my biggest problem was to actually make a sense of depth and keep the white spaces white and masking fluid is just brilliant because you can put it on, I'll show you how, um, to keep certain areas white and then just go nuts with the brush and, and make something wild happen. Um, the masking fluid kind of takes really uh, badly on your brush so if you're like me and you don't really have the attention span to clean them right away you should pick a brush uh, prefer preferably a cheap one that will be your masking fluid sacrifice brush that you will just kind of kill and only use for masking fluid. See, this is how it looks. It's, you, you can't focus, but it's, it's awful. You can't paint with it anymore. It's, it's ruined, but I use it for masking fluid because then it's just like, then it's this, this paint thing, brush, whatever. Let's get started, and uh, we will today we will paint a little landscape, some trees, and make trees have sunlight fall on them and have like shadows and stuff, and make it make it kind of nice. Hopefully, I don't know how it will turn out. If it turns out bad, maybe I won't put it up. But we'll start with the masking fluid. We. I really don't know which way to hold, 
which way you should hold it, but let's go. It's also childproof, so it might take you a couple of tries to open it. And it you can see it's sort of just like yellow, white, and it smells awful. And you put your, your horrible brush in it. You actually don't have to do it. Um, you can just go ahead and start painting, but I like, I like making some spaces white or leaving them white and then sort of it's like painting from from a wrong end you know you first you start out with the darker parts and then you yeah I'm just rambling I don't know make some trees some nice trees just lines I don't know if you can see it it's just putting this fluid thickly so we can take it off later and add some color there. So I'm saying you don't have to do this. This is just an optional thing, but I like to. And I'm just going to show you how. And you will need to leave this to dry for a little while um, because it needs to solidify and become like this plaster, plastic, silicon consistency thing so yeah um, the actually the most important thing to remember with watercolors funny enough is that you have to use a lot of water and it's been really difficult for me to learn because I've been painting with acrylics for a while and we don't have to use a lot of water when you paint with acrylics and you make some trees in the background they start a bit higher up maybe they don't you see don't, you don't see all of it and a little tree here, a little tree over there. Is that enough trees? Do we have enough trees? One more tree here. Okay, now um, this has to dry, and this this will this will happen a lot. I'll do something, and I'll be like, well, this has to dry for about 10, 20 minutes, and then I'll turn off the camera and come back to you and be like, oh, look, one second passed, it's dry, but in reality, it's just a long time and it's, patience is very important to have when you're dealing with watercolor. It looks like this right now. And let's let's leave it to dry. Come back a little later. And we are back. The masking fluid is dry now. You can see it changed color. It went from being white to kind of this yellowish. And yeah, that's how you know when it's dry. Also that it feels dry. We can finally start applying some actual watercolors to this. And uh, But before, we need to make a couple of decisions because with watercolors you can't really do something and be like, oh no, I didn't mean it, uh, I'll take it back. Because you can't, you don't have any white, you can't, you can't put any white colors over the dark areas. So you usually start with the lightest bits and you kind of cover everything or parts of it and then you just get darker and more intense as you progress through your drawing or painting whatever you have to decide on your source of light because that will uh, dictate which parts of different objects will be lighter and darker the shadows the contrast so let's just say we have our light source here put a little x mark like in this area that way and all our shadows will be kind of pointing this in this direction from the trees or whatever. And we will begin, begin some water, put some lots of water on the brush and just put some water on your paper. Actually, sometimes or most of the times you tape your paper to a piece of uh, like a wooden pallet instead of the table. But because I'm filming this and I don't want to move too much around because then I'll get out of focus or outside of the camera, I just went ahead and taped it to the table. But I don't know what the difference is. Maybe you can just tape it to the table if you don't have a wooden pallet or tablet or whatever. And then we have some yellow. It's actually quite, quite yellow. And we'll put some yellow, maybe this will be a hill, I don't know yet, I haven't decided that, which is maybe not very good, because I have to make a, some sort of 
landscape in my head, but we'll just go with it and see how it works out. Uh, sometimes people um, draw it, draw a, their uh, their picture with a with a bro with a pencil and then uh, go around with it or kind of color it with watercolors. But I don't personally I don't like pencil strokes on on paper when you look at a watercolor drawing. So I'm not going to do that. But you can do that. I mean it's your it's your drawing. You decide how you want to paint. I can't tell you what to do. I'm just here with some advice. Uh, have some yellow, have some a little bit less yellow, I don't know, the sky, if it's so bright, will it even be visible? Maybe we can like make a tiny corner that's blue, make it go out here, a little bit of blue, a lot of yellow. Yeah, and that just took no time at all, and you can see like it bulges out here, and because it's really wet. Yeah, that's that's what happens, and it's it's actually a really thin layer of paint. But this is what you have to do when you do watercolors. You just do really thin layers, and you let them dry forever. And let's let this dry for a little bit. And we're back. You can see the color or the light has changed because this has been drying for a while, and I've been doing something else. I've been drawing usually i do watercolors well in in between doing other stuff because it takes hours and hours to dry and i don't even remember what i was drawing here this is why it's good to make sketches but anyway let's go on and make a landscape happen and now we just we what we've done so far is we have a sort of mild layer of paint and now I want to add something more to it to maybe indicate like oh this is this is maybe a forest or something so what I'm doing now is I'm starting out with some yellow here and we're gonna try and, and go ahead and make the first shadow for the trees, so add up some blue and just sort of drag it along. And you can see as we drag it, it becomes more and more green. So that's nice. And this is our first shadow. And let's say it's an autumn forest, so we want to add some colors. So maybe we add a little bit of red over here. Maybe something over here. Mm, this doesn't seem clean. But just adding kind of a couple of colors here and there and playing with it, mixing it up. I mean, watercolors, they're very, they're really not the most precise medium or type of paint you can play with because, I mean, it's, it's very liquid, so it doesn't really, it can't be controlled that well. So you have to let go a little bit and just have fun with it and do something. Add some more water. Yeah, maybe it's a, maybe it should be an autumn forest. So add some more reds. Well, this is very red. We can just have this red over here. Maybe we can have a little hill in the background somewhere, like over here. And just. I mean, you can you can pick whatever colors you want. You can pick green. The thing with with um, drawing with green is really helpful to first put yellow on and then put blue, um, and then it will sort of mix and give you a richer green with more different shades and kind of look more fun that way. But you don't have to do that. I mean, you can do whatever you want. So some more yellow. Make it really nice and shiny or bright put a little bit that's a bit too much see when you put a little bit of paint you just put a bit more water to dilute it and get some interesting shading going on here between the yellow it really takes very little time to 
mix the colors and it takes a couple of hours to dry so yeah I don't know if I want to add anything more to this layer hmm no I think this should dry should dry maybe a bit more red here a different kind of red like a colder color maybe it's some sort of bushes or something it's, it's really helpful to have uh, a photograph or sit outside and draw after something so you can see exactly how the shadows are. I'm not going to do it now because usually what I end up doing is doing a quick sketch of it and taking a couple of pictures and recreating it in a studio. I'm just drawing this out of my head to show you the basic layering technique that I use and so you can see how to make these really wildly colorful things happen. And you can see like here it's much more intense than in this area and that's because this is closer to us as a, as a viewer. So this becomes, this gets less contrast and this has more contrast and colors. So this seems, it makes an illusion of it seeming closer than that area, for example. Also more detail with maybe some more red dots. I don't know why I'm putting so much red in it. It's a, it's a nice color, it's a sunny day. Put some red. Okay, now we let this dry. So now this layer dried and we are, where did I put my water? Oh dear, oh dear. Take some new water. This is pink, you can see it. And now this layer dried, and we can uh, add some more things. And I moved all of my things as well. Yeah. Maybe make some trees. You can you can clearly see the difference between the the upper layer that only had well you almost can't see any colors on it at all. You can see that it only had one layer of paint, and then this layer had two, and the second layer was much more. Uh, full of color than the first layer. So let's just go ahead and draw some more things. Well, this is the main point, is just making things in more layers and seeing that, whoa, it actually makes a difference in how much, how many layers you make and makes it look pretty. Again, you can use a pencil to outline the things that you want to draw. I just, I just don't like how it looks, but you can do it. I mean, it's just a taste, a question of taste and preference. These are some evergreens, some evergreens. I mean, you can see I'm not using green, although I'm painting a forest. Well, yeah, I think green just gets boring because then you have, well, this is green and that is green and then everything just turns green and then you don't know what colors to pick and when you kind of avoid green while making a forest then you get something much more interesting. Like this, put some yellow on the top. This looks like a giant tree then. Well, oh well. Now we make some shading. Remember I put some blue in it. Here and I put some more blue. There's the shade, the shadow of the tree. Some more blue here. You can see I can go over the tape but it will prevent me from painting on the very edge. What else can we do here? Hmm. We can maybe make, maybe we can make something in, in kind of greenish color. Just use all of the colors, go completely nuts. Make something here. Also keep it pale. when it's far away and you can use 
a little bit more color when you get closer. This wasn't very well planned. Then you have a tree out of nowhere. Maybe a tree over here as well. Hmm. It needs a shadow as well. It's darker by the edge or by the bottom. Some shadow. Hmm. There you go, that's fun. That looks like fun. Little funky forest town. Hmm. We can. Make a tree over here. Make one side of it a bit more yellow to show that the sun is falling onto it. The other side a bit more green. You see when I go over uh, the, the area that's been covered with the masking fluid, it just sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't get to the paper. And when, I think when this layer will dry, we will take off the masking fluid and see what we got. Here we can put some more red colors, make it really bright. This is what I, I, I just, what I just did, I just put some water on it and then put my brush into a lot of paint and then just made a little dot and then it will dry and have an interesting shade to it. So yeah, and then it looks, it starts to look, it start, it's starting to look like something. I think these trees, they need some sort of shadow as well, but because they're far away, they can't be as distinct as this, as this shadow, so I'm just try and make, maybe make it a little bit blue, like this. This tree should have a shadow as well. So, oh. Like so. And can maybe have something on the horizon here. Yeah, this is, don't judge the composition, I'm just trying to show you the layers right now. So this looks like a fun forest, we'll let this layer dry. And now we can see that the light has changed again, because now it's the evening, and I've literally spent the whole day just waiting for this to dry and doing other stuff. But here's the exciting part, we get to take these things off. So what we've done is made, um, how many layers do we have? Three, four, doesn't matter. We made some layers of paint and now we can start taking the masking fluid off. You can use a eraser to sort of erase it off or you can just pull on it and then you can take it off like this. And you can see there is a white line under where the masking fluid was and that's basically what it does and it's pretty cool. So yes, we we'll take this off. Sometimes if your paper is really soft, it can um, kind of stick to the paper and then pull it off. I had that happen to me or if it's not dry enough, it can also rip your paper, but usually it should be okay just taking it off like this. And we can see our trees and start painting those, like I can't grab onto this, oh no I can, we 
And just grab onto this one. There's a little bit left. Make sure there's no left. Sometimes you have little bits and pieces. Just run a few fingers over the paper. And you can see it's totally flat. It's not like wavy anymore because it, it has dried and it's been taped. So now we get some more water. Now it is yellow. Uh, because I've been painting other things, but it's okay. As long as it's not very dirty, it should be fine to paint with. And now we want to do something with our trees. And we again start with the lightest color. It will be like light green. Let's start with the first one. Have this be painted here. I mean, you can, again, pick any color you want. Yeah, yellow is really good when you want to highlight where the sunlight hits the tree, because yellow is actually the color that's closest to white in the color spectrum, if you want to go from something dark to something light. It just, yeah, just use yellow for, for sunshine. Um, and what color should the tree be? Probably be a little bit brown. No, maybe I should let this dry as well. I don't know. See how it goes. I like to add a little bit of blue into the shading, just to give it a bit more contrast in the regions where it should be shadow. You see, I'm using really thick layer or really thick paint right now. I'm not putting too much water in it. And that's because it's so close, supposed to be so close to us, this tree, that it should be very, very colorful. And then we use blue, a little bit more blue. There we go. I don't know, maybe this won't look good, but we'll see. Make it less blue as you go upwards because, yeah, let's get lighter. Maybe make a branch. Yeah, that looks like a branch. Maybe make another branch here. Your trees can have branches, a little bit like this. Maybe we want a, what's it called, a bark tree. So, hmm, a bit more yellow as well here. Just to show that sunny on this side. don't think this tree will be as tall, otherwise the proportions are kind of weird. You can see that it gets less and less colorful as we get further away from the foreground and closer to the background. So yeah, pick the colors you like, experiment. Remember to do it in layers. Remember to have the patience to let the watercolors dry. It's okay when, it, when watercolors run, it's fine. Maybe put a little bit more shadow here towards those trees. Oh, that wasn't good, oh well. Everybody makes mistakes. And I think this tree should have a little shadow as well. There you go. Maybe those trees should have some shadows too. There you go. 
Take a color for this tree. Maybe we'll just make it green. Should we make it green? Maybe we can make it brown. Or maybe make it orange. I don't know. Let's try and do something exciting with the tree. It's very orange. Just add a bit of blue to it. Darken it up a bit. It's pretty bright. I'm hoping it will fade out a little once it dries. There you go. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to control the water sometimes. This happens. Just a matter of practicing and getting the right amounts of water to paint ratio. It's pretty difficult, but don't get a hang of it. I'll get a hang of it. Make some more branches. Everybody loves branches. And use a more dull color for a tree over here. Make some branches for this tree. Not really pretty, but you know. It's fine. Not every tree has to be a masterpiece. Oh, that's interesting. You might want to use a smaller brush. Yeah, there you go. Learn from my mistakes. Hmm. Maybe we'll just make it brown as well. I don't know. Let's see how it dries, how it looks when it dries. You can always, remember, you can always make something darker. So if this turns out horrible when it dries, we can always just make some brown over it, make it pretty again. Important thing is to just, if you have an idea or if you have something you want to try out, just try it and see how it looks and it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. And if it does work, well, you might just discover something amazing. So, try new things. There you go. And... So yeah, now we have this and we are going to let it dry <sighs> again. So now it dried and if we want we can just add some leaves, pick a color again, put some more red in it, put some dots, you can also just like wave your brush at it and it will sprinkle around but since it's a it's a small um, drawing we'll just sort of lightly pet it like so It 
does not have to be perfect. Get a bit of leaves. Don't really know what to do with the side one. Maybe make some more branches for it. Take another brush. You can also use a thinner brush if you want a bit more control over it. Again, it's up to you. And um, it ends up looking something like this. Which is pretty nice. Um, so remember to use layers, let things dry, and leave some comments, suggestions for improvement. Subscribe if you want to see some more tutorials. Also let me know what kind of tutorials you want to see. So yeah, thanks for watching.